So I wanted to make a quick video on copying data in Bifrost and the pretty big performance impact this can have. So what I mean is uh, a lot of times Bifrost will copy data when it's necessary and we don't really have to think about it. So in this example, I have one uh, object coming in, I'm making some change to it and then I'm merging it with itself, you know, a previous version of itself. And because I'm doing this, it actually has to copy the data at some point. So that way we can have two to merge together. And this is fine for a single object. It's gonna cost a little bit, but it's pretty insignificant. Where this is usually gonna get substantial is gonna be in loops or whenever you're doing some operation a bunch of times. Um, so I've got an iterator here. I'm doing a thousand iterations where I get the point position, set some value, and then update the property. So I can profile this. And I'm just gonna move the sphere around to get it to update. And you can see it's pretty slow and exact time at about 100 millis or 190 milliseconds on average. I have another version, it does the exact same thing, also a thousand iterations, but if I profile this version, it's quite a bit faster. Um, in fact, it's um, you know about a half a millisecond, so right around 400 times faster. So you know why is that? Well, as you might guess, one of these were copying data and the other were not, we're, we're able to avoid that. So if we follow the kind of the logic of this, we're getting the point position, and this is fine, we can get properties um, we can get values from the array. We can do that all day long and we won't have to copy the data because we're just querying the data. We're not actually making changes. It's once we go to set a value in this array and Bifrost looks at this and says, okay, I'm changing this array, but I'm also still using it up here. Um, even though we're gonna be overwriting it down the road, at the time that this gets evaluated, this is still being used somewhere else. So I'm gonna have to make a copy of it before I change it. Now compared to the other compound, instead of get property, I'm using extract property. And I'm not sure if this is hidden as internal or not by default, but it does the exact same thing, except for when we get the property, we also remove it from the object so it's no longer being referenced. So there's a few extra notes here, but the function is exactly the same. I'm just getting that point position data, setting some value, and then updating the property. The difference is when we go to edit the data, it's not, it's no longer on this object anymore. It's not being referenced anywhere else. So Bifrost says, you know, no one else is using this data. I can just change it without having to copy it. And this is what makes this so much faster. Of course, a simple way to avoid this is to just get the data and then operate it on it directly. But this doesn't mean whatever operations you're doing aren't gonna copy data. So here I have two examples of a compound. It's just a simple utility that adds an item to an array and then returns the index of that new item. Very similar to Python's append. So inside of this, again, it's just building an array. And then I can get the index of that new item by taking the size and subtracting one. Now, when I first made this, I was thought I was being really clever by just using the size of the old array because I know this is gonna give the correct value and I don't have to subtract one. But this is actually a horrible idea because it opens up the possibility that this whole array is going to need to be copied. So again, if we follow the logic, we get to this port, uh, this node, and then we're saying, okay, so we're changing this array, but this we're still going to need this array down the road when we get the size of it. So we actually have to copy this before we make a change and then send that down the pipe. And so that can make this significantly slower. Whereas this one, since we're only referencing the new array, then we don't have to worry about that. Now, another interesting solution is if we can ensure this evaluates before this does, then we don't actually have to worry about it being uh, uh, copied. So if I were to put down a force pool port and then just put this in before the build array, now, um, since this is gonna compute this and then this, uh, we're kind of getting all the information out of this array that we'll need, and then we're making a change to it so it will never get copied. Lastly, I just wanted to give an example of this in actual practice. So this is a compound I was working on which collapses uh, edges. Um, so the input is this plane and then I'm collapsing a whole bunch of edges uh, just when I was testing this and this is the result. Now, I, when I was working on this, I remember uh, you know I was profiling it and the results came out just a lot slower than I expected. You know, I figured, okay, this, you know, 85 milliseconds, this isn't that dense of a plane. This is, this seems way too slow. And you know, after some digging around, I eventually came to the conclusion, ah, there's this one little thing I messed up on. So I'm um, updating the adjacency here, since each time we collapse an edge, I actually have to update the adjacency for the faces that were you know, destroyed in the collapse. Um, and when I'm doing this, I'm updating the array in each of these compounds, but the problem is I'm referencing the old uh, face adjacency for all of these. So by just making one little change where I pass the new 
uh, updated array. So I'm getting two at once. So both of these are being evaluated at the same time when they go in here. So I can do these two together fine. And then I need to use this new updated one when I do the next two. And it turns out this uh, makes a massive difference. So before I was at 86 milliseconds. And then if I go ahead and reevaluate this, now I'm down to five milliseconds and kind of more in line with what I expected.